With primitive eyes, we once beheld our earth and worshipped it, its strength and its mystery. But then we learned to harness what we had loved. And each new miracle has slowly destroyed it. Beyond our dreaming, we have forgotten the earth, and the skies have turned gray with our waste. Debris from a smoking dump darkens the sky around Washington, D.C. An Arizona lumber mill smudges the horizon with its refuse. In Los Angeles, California, automobiles create the main source of air pollution, combining with the sun to produce photochemical smog. With each new asphalt playground or city sidewalk, we destroy plant life and we lose an important source of oxygen. Ozone carbon monoxide and other poisons fill the air. These are then absorbed by our lungs. Each day, public transportation in Los Angeles County dumps 205 tons of waste into our air. This tonnage affects all of us. Industry adds its share of filth, 2,000 tons. The automobile increases the load by dumping an additional 12,500 tons into our air every day throughout a lifetime. Our hearts may double in size under this strain. Whether large or small, Combustion creates air pollution. The automobile with its wasteful power plant presents a perfect example. When a fuel is burned, some unburned hydrocarbons combine with nitrogen oxides. As the sun heats them, a photochemical change occurs. The result is smog. Photochemical smog. But the automobile is the mechanical backbone of our culture and the major cause of air pollution in California. All automobiles are guilty, new and used, common and unique, gulping in precious air, polluting what's left. Even while turned off, the automobile soils the air. Simple evaporation accounts for 10% of our problem. Running, idling, or off. Always consuming, always polluting. Clothes that may never be clean because of smog. And the victims of lung diseases. Made worse by smog. Having had uh, chronic obstructive lung disease as well, um, and about emphysema. During heavy smoke concentrations, I get a um, very heavy pressure on my chest. Of course, it's very hard for me to breathe in the Los Angeles area 
because when you get in a traffic jam, it is far from pleasant with all the pollution in the air. And I look forward to the days that we will be without smog. Medical research is determining the effects of smog on living tissue. Dr. William Blackmore of the University of Southern California analyzes smog damage on a colony of mice. He carefully notes changes in each mouse. Damage to the vital organs of the animal has a parallel in the human body. The animal laboratory sites that you are seeing here today are part of a large contract from the United States Public Health Service with the University of Southern California designed to study the long-term effects of smog on the um, animal colony which we have housed in this site and uh, in another adjacent site. These black mice, for example, showed that we had an incidence of what we call pulmonary adenomas. These are um, tumors which grow in the lung, which are not a normal uh, physiology or a normal anatomy of that area. Specially designed equipment recreates smoggy atmospheric conditions in the laboratory. Dr. Robert Bills, also of the University of Southern California, has noted severe damage to lung tissue. Healthy mice are exposed to the smoggy conditions we encounter every day. After three hours of exposure, electron micrographs reveal broken membranes, overtaxed cells, and disrupted cytoplasm. Young mice can recover, but those over middle age cannot. Dr. Oscar Bolcham investigates the damage to human lungs. Here at Los Angeles County uh, General Hospital, uh, the staff on the pulmonary disease service of the uh, University of Southern California uh, School of Medicine is uh, keenly interested in uh, trying to ascertain the effects of air pollutants upon the breathing of patients with chronic respiratory disease with emphysema. Blood tests before and after exercise reveal the strain caused by air pollution. While breathing polluted air, oxygen consumption increases. During exercise, breathing becomes difficult. The lungs strain for oxygen. With age, this strain may prove fatal. I certainly think the smog devices will help uh, greatly uh, once uh, the great majority of automobiles uh, have them on, uh, so that they should be effective in reducing uh, an important source of air pollution. Uh, however, hopefully, uh, it would be still better if we uh, wouldn't produce uh, uh, this pollution in the first place. On smoggy days, residents of Detroit, Michigan, San Francisco, California, or Birmingham, Alabama, inhale an amount of tumor-inducing fumes equivalent to 50 cigarettes a day, merely by breathing. At Riverside, California, common petunias display the crippling power of smog. Researchers analyze other plants, such as the tobacco leaf. All are damaged. Damage to produce is also examined. This lemon tree, grown in filtered air, produced a full harvest. A tree grown in the air we breathe produced this one. In California, this year alone, polluted air means a loss to agriculture of $132 million. Lost beauty. Lower property values a national loss of $11 billion a year.
$65 for every American. But this dilemma has not gone unchecked. The California Motor Vehicle Pollution Control Board, established in 1960, has approved solutions found by private industry to the problem of auto smog and is researching others. The board is charged with the responsibility of testing and certifying control systems for all vehicular emissions. It has established a worldwide reputation for its pioneer achievements in the reduction of air pollution. Its work forms the basis for the nationwide control program. The unique about the pollution problem in Los Angeles, the most unique feature is simply the way it's advertised. In a laboratory in downtown Los Angeles, the board and its staff of highly qualified technicians have examined many aspects of the vehicle pollution problem. Research now focuses on the automobile power plant, the internal combustion engine. Scientists have found two major sources of hydrocarbon emissions. As the piston compresses the air-fuel mixture, gasoline slips by the rings. These unburned hydrocarbons escape into the atmosphere through the crankcase blow-by vent. 25% of the problem is created here. Fuel that does not escape is ignited by the spark plug, but still not all the fuel is burned. The relatively cool cylinder wall quenches the advancing flame front. Gasoline lining the wall remains unburned, and when the exhaust valve opens, this fuel is forced through the exhaust system into the atmosphere. 65% of the smog farming emissions are found here. This particular experiment measures the amount of unburned gasoline or hydrocarbons passing through the crankcase. As the car speeds up, emission levels increase. Unfortunately, emission levels are also high during deceleration. Because of this, stop and go traffic conditions raise hydrocarbon levels drastically. By mid-morning, sunshine has turned the unburned gasoline into photochemical smog. Estimates indicate that nearly 2 million gallons of unburned gasoline and 22,000 tons of carbon monoxide are poured into the air every day in California. To aid in setting standards for the control of air pollution, volunteers submit to eye irritation. In an environmental chamber, part of the state laboratories, photochemical smog can be recreated to any desired intensity. The conditions these volunteers will face are exactly those of a hot afternoon in downtown Los Angeles. Exhaust fumes are pumped into the chamber and irradiated by ultraviolet light, which represents the sun. The concentration of photochemical smog soon becomes disagreeable. The level of tolerance for each volunteer is recorded and analyzed. From these and similar tests, the state of California has determined that 0.50 parts per million of ozone, 275 parts per million of hydrocarbons, and 1.5% by volume for carbon monoxide are unhealthy vehicle emission levels. In Los Angeles, private industry cooperates by controlling 80% of its waste. But controlling the automobile is a different problem. Researchers have tried to solve the situation by altering fuel compositions. Each formula underwent lengthy examination. This is a recording of the California exhaust emission test. Start the engine and idle for 40 seconds at 1100 RPM. City, freeway, and open road driving conditions were simulated.
but because the internal combustion process cracks fuel into 150 different hydrocarbons, all gasoline creates smog. New smog-free methods of vehicular propulsion are in various stages of development, like this turbine engine. burns nearly 100% of its fuel. Another development is this battery-powered automobile. Electricity serves as its fuel. The United States Army is researching the revolutionary fuel cell. This power plant operates on any fuel, consumes little oxygen, and is completely noiseless and smogless. However, the board estimates that a mass-produced automobile powered by any of these systems is still a decade away. And the smog problem is with us now. But the situation isn't hopeless. The board has approved control systems for both crankcase and exhaust gases. Crankcase blow-by emissions are removed by a system which returns unburned gasoline to the cylinder, eliminating 25% of our vehicular problem. Exhaust fumes require more complex controls. One of the most widely used methods is engine modification to induce more complete combustion in the cylinders. Another system ignites escaping gases by delivering fresh air through distribution tubes to exhaust ports next to the engine cylinder. Oxygen is thus introduced at this point of highest temperature to oxidize the unburned gasoline. If all automobiles in Los Angeles were equipped with control systems, smog would be decreased by two-thirds. I'm Spencer Williams, administrator of the Health and Welfare Agency of the state of California, speaking for Governor Ronald Reagan. California is proud to have taken the lead in reducing the blight of auto smog. The state's program, though relatively new, has explored many uncharted byways. Today, controls are responsible for keeping one half million gallons of unburned gasoline and 2,400 tons of carbon monoxide from entering California's atmosphere every single day. As new cars equipped with both crankcase and approved exhaust control systems continue to roll off the assembly lines and replace older vehicles, that total will grow. Research indicates that a vehicle with controls puts out 70% less pollution than one without controls. So as new cars replace old ones, the smog situation improves. Of course, Motorists and the automotive service industry also bear a responsibility in this program to make certain that their cars are kept tuned to manufacturer's specifications. A single misfiring spark plug will drastically increase emission levels. I urge all Californians to help us rid our atmosphere of this auto-created aerial garbage and to protect our air, our greatest natural resource. Control systems are installed and maintained at authorized stations throughout the state. Proper maintenance of all systems will ensure longer life and better performance for each engine and its smog mechanism. We can have clean air again. Our gardens will be brighter. Our harvests more abundant, ourselves stronger and healthier. Clean air is our heritage.
now our responsibility. We must actively support and share in air pollution control. It's as important as our next breath.